Koda mane zetila. Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated. Just be, go ahead and be seated. You know, on Friday night, I really did not want to. I really did not want to close the meeting on Friday night. I mean, the power of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. We were talking about this wonderful thing that God did when He filled our mouth with praise to be able to worship Him, to speak of all of His wonderful works, His wonderful. Glory of, glorious realm of New Testament prophecy called tongue. Tongues of fire. Holy Ghost language. That Paul puts it like this. You pray in the spirit. You pray with the understanding also. So you see the right kind of transition that needs to take place. You begin in the... So that your lips and your heart... And your, realm of thinking knows exactly what to go ahead and pray for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And then we sing with the Spirit. And then sing with the understanding also. And then there's, the, once again, that natural transition from singing with the, with the tongues that only the Holy Spirit can produce, the language that only He can give, and then that transition into the understanding also. That's the way that God planned it. That's the way He set it up. I love talking about the Holy Spirit because when I talk about Him, the glory of His wonderful presence overwhelms our lives and people are hungry and they're listening. Oh, it just gets better. You know, one of the things that the Lord wants to do is He wants to bring you into a place called the unity of the Spirit. He wants to bring you into a, a place of oneness with Him because if you're in oneness with Him, you're in oneness with me. And you're in oneness with everybody else in oneness with Him. And then we have a divine connection that's coming right out of, that, that, that flows to us right out of heaven from Christ Jesus. And then everybody gets to be filled. You know, the Spirit of the Lord would fill us continually with everything that belongs to the life of God. And my, how much He wants to do that right now. My, how much He wants to do that right now. Christ Jesus, He's here. The Holy Spirit, He's here. Hallelujah. You here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to be a shield about you. His glory would be a shield about you. His manifest presence would be a shield about you. You can live tomorrow in His presence without any interruption of heaven all day long because His presence would be a shield about you. His glory would be a shield about you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. You know, it's a wonderful thing when God's people are able to hook up with God. It's a wonderful thing. That's exactly why he produced the new covenant so that we would be able to hook up with him. So that we wouldn't just have to sit around and ponder and think anymore. But yet people still pondering and thinking. But I'm telling you tonight, the power of Pentecost that stopped Peter from pondering and thinking is right here tonight to stop you from pondering and thinking.
you can just start receiving from this day forward. You can become so sensitive because that's the will of the Father. That's why he took away the stony adamant heart that could not feel his presence, that could not relate to him, that could not receive the things that he supplies and gave us a sensitive heart of flesh so that everything that he's doing, we would be able, hallelujah, God, to experience it. Thank you, Jesus, for your glorious realm. Hallelujah. You know, I've watched over and again how people that really are far away many times get touched by the power of God before those who've sat around in His presence a long time ever begin to even sense anything. And that's sad, isn't it? I'm telling you right now, you want to get your, you want, you want to get your, you want to get your heart soft right now in Jesus' name. You want to get filled with a love that has no criticism in it. You want to get filled with a love that finds no fault. People tell me they've got the discerning of spirits. You don't have the discerning of spirits till you have a compassion to love people more than you did before you knew the problem. Huh? You don't get discerning of spirits till you have the capacity to love people more than you did before you knew their problem. You know what I'm saying? People get all infatuated, get all in love and just really think so highly of somebody then they find out their problem and then all of a sudden they don't like them that much anymore. Ah, well, I'm telling you right now, when you walk around with Father, Father loves you more. Father loves men lost in their trespasses and sin. God so loves them so much, He gave His only begotten Son. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 Ooh. He gave His only begotten Son for me. I was lost in my trespasses and sins. Christ died for me. You can get you just you can get so happy about that any no matter what you're going through. The way that Father cares for us is an amazing thing, isn't it? Father, we thank you. Thank you so much that you love us so much. Father, I pray tonight that everybody in this place would yield themselves to this wonderful outpouring of the Spirit of the Lord. The very the Lord's Spirit. The Holy Spirit, His Spirit of holiness, His Spirit of life and goodness. That every person in this place would want you more than anything else, oh God. It's not hard. It's not hard. You just let, you just let Him. It's not hard. He invites you to come on into this realm of life. Christ Jesus is the door. You don't walk up to that door and He just slam it in your face. It's open to you. You'll have to leave some stuff behind, maybe. You might have to lay aside some weights tonight. You can't run the race with joy if you got weights on you. Father, thank you for your goodness. Oh, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the evidence of your presence. Thank you for the glory of your life. Jesus. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
I want about half of you to say, Lord, I just love you so much. The half that I wanted to say it didn't say it. The half that I did that I wanted to say it didn't say it, and I thought that that was what was going to be happening because ha that half that I wanted to say it aren't participating right now. So it was a lot likely that they would participate with what I said. You see, but you just begin to talk to the Lord like this, and that's what happens. It, people begging on, going, "Oh God, what's wrong with me? Well, what do I gotta do to get to step into this realm? Really, nothing. Not do anything. Just, just do it." Accept it. Just start telling God that you love Him. Start praising Him. Start dancing around. Feeling good. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, a big part of why we're here tonight is... is First and foremost, because we're here to just enjoy the presence of the Lord, receive the things that the Holy Ghost wants to supply. But also we hear together here, uh, in, in some respects, as an act of intercession for everybody that is lost, for this whole world that right now is, is standing in the balance between life and death, eternity without God. If suddenly somehow the people of God would touch a deeper realm of His presence and a deeper realm of His anointing and step out of the problems and concerns of their own life and step into the glory of His life, then all of a sudden there would be a greater power of His, of His love and a witness of His love and a witness of His goodness seen to all mankind. That's a big part of why we're here tonight so that God's people get perfected. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody well, I don't want to be perfected. Are you in the wrong place? <laughs> we're here tonight to get you perfected. Yeah. Build you up in the faith. Yeah. So be strong in the strength of the Lord, the power of His might, not pursue your own life and will. But be raptured into heaven, hearing the voice of the master being led by the power of his glorious moving in our life. In the, I, I, this morning I preached a sermon on the Lord has no desire to be the ob object of religious ritual. He has no desire to be the object of religious ritual. He's looking for a tr real relationship. Amen. People want to make him an object of a religious ritual. He ain't going to fit in your, hang on, fit in your plan. He ain't going to fit in that plan. He's God who possesses all good things. He's the ruler and creator of everything. And he invites anybody who wants to to come stand in his presence. And as soon as you go into his presence, you have no sense of sin. You listen to me. As soon as you step into his presence, there's no conscience of sin. Sin is not even allowed in. God has made a way through the blood of Jesus Christ that causes us now to be able to come boldly into his presence and immediately we're overwhelmed with his love, his goodness, his acceptance, his life. If you find a place living in this wonderful love relationship, you won't want that mess you've been in. That's true. You won't, you, won't, you won't fall prey to the, the plans that Satan has to trip you up and rob you of your joy and take away the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something tonight I think some people don't understand. If you do get tripped up and all you got to do is just just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me, wash me in your blood, cleanse me, Holy Spirit, strengthen me never to do it again. Father, I'm so sorry. Instantly and immediately, you restore just like you were before. Restore just though you never sinned. And have a place above the seraphims who only cried, Holy, 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 since the day that they were made. Ha, ha, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
all this pain and all these hurts and all this suffering and all these condemnation and all these accusations and all these disappointments. You need to get rid of that nonsense. You need to, you need to say goodbye to that. You're not listening to that anymore. Then this day forward, you're only going to listen to the comfort of the Holy Ghost, the truth. Those things that belong to life. Those things that build you up. Those things that tell you about how much Father loves you. It's goodness of God that leads men to repentance. And Father wants to show His goodness to you. And he wants to show His goodness through you so that those that are around you that are stuck in either the ditch of religion or the blindness of sin and iniquity from the God of this world, we know that those who are lost are lost simply because this gospel, this good news is hid from them. And we don't want these things to be hid from you. I know about all this. I know about all the challenges. I know about all the things that the enemy tries to come at us with to take away our hope, our confidence, our expectation. One one man, one theologian said one time, he said, love. Love, hope, and faith are the three legs, three pillars to the life of the believer. If one of them begins to collapse, the life falls over. Stay strong by the Spirit in all three. And then Satan comes and tries to attack those things continually. It's time that you no longer be ignorant concerning his devices, but recognize, look, hey, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what takes place. God, the Holy Spirit's here to strengthen you. He's here to build you up. He's here to show you how to do it right next time. He's, show you, he's here to show you how to walk perfectly in every good thing that Christ Jesus Died for us to have. Jesus died at Calvary's cross, rose again on the third day so that we can have his life. And then just gave his life to us as a gift and that's salvation. Hallelujah. And just because you won't, you, just because you can't see Jesus, well, that don't mean it's nothing. That doesn't mean that uh, you're right. God's right. If you receive the gift of salvation, God the Father in his love placed you in the midst of Jesus and placed Jesus in the midst of you. And you can choose to recognize that and cooperate with it and benefit from it. Or you can go on in your doubt and unbelief and have nothing. Huh? Doubt can't produce nothing. Do you know that? No. Unbelief produces less. <laughs> huh? But if you believe the good word of God, if you, who's believed what God has said? That's what the prophet said. Who's believed our report? There's a lot of people who haven't believed our report. The report that the father gave of his son. See, if, if there's anything that makes the difference between a person who maybe functions more in the anointing than someone else, it's because it's simpler to them. Because they've just received and accepted what God has said. Not struggling with it. I'm not struggling with it. That's why Paul said, make sure that you entered into the rest, that none of you come short of the rest. Labored in there into the rest. Don't fall out for the same manner of unbelief. Like those of Israel who were in the wilderness, they failed to believe. They just murmured and complained. It didn't matter what God was doing. They murmured and complained. It wasn't good enough. Something wasn't right about their tent. Huh? Or it was too hot outside. Huh? Or they didn't like the person that was appointed over them because they thought they were smarter than the person that got appointed over them. What's going on now? Just something. You know, just things, same things going on with everybody else. Huh? They got an older camel than, every, than, than everybody else, and they don't understand why they, their camel has to be so old. If they were blessed and God loved them, they'd have a newer camel. Huh? They didn't understand. Oh, the same thing's going on. Nothing's changed. So said, don't fall off the same manner of unbelief. Come on, I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the inheritance. Come on, I'll give it to you. I gave it to you. I gave you the inheritance. It's yours. Who's going to believe the good word of God? Who's going to believe the good news? It's mine. 
He said it's mine, so it's mine. Yeah. Huh? So I said, well, I don't deserve it. Well, you don't deserve it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. That, is, that isn't why he didn't give it to you because you deserve it. He, just, he gave these things to you because you accepted them. <laughs> and then when you begin to live in that kind of freedom and you walk around in a relationship with him, it's so good, you don't want the other mess that you've been struggling so hard to get rid of and you can't get rid of it because it's bigger than you. But when God steps into your life and he starts walking around with you and going everywhere that you're going and, and you're enjoying his presence, then I mean, goodness, ain't nothing bigger than him. He's kicking everything off the block. Nobody even, dare, nobody even dares come around. If you go into Williams, New York, a little barrio of New York, you're in Williams, New York, into the, into the ultra-Orthodox community, they get the biggest guys in the community to patrol the blocks. I mean, big. I didn't know that Hebrews came in that size. <laughs> and they just make sure nobody, just, nobody is on the block unless they're supposed to be there. If you don't have a yarmulke on and look right, you, you, you're going you're gonna to get, get in some serious trouble. What are you doing here? Huh? It's their neighborhood. There's a lot of bad things going on around New York. They're going to make sure they take care of their own. Hallelujah. Huh? They're like a bunch of Nazarites, a bunch of Danites, you know. Taking care of everybody. Well, I've got the angel of the Lord here to me, with me. I got the angel of the Lord when I got bad news. I got the angel of the Lord with me. He didn't leave. Oh, bad news. You have to handle that on your own. It's bad news. I'll be back when the good news comes. No way, man. He's right there with me. He's right there with me. When you know the angel of the Lord is with you, hallelujah. When you know the company of the Holy Ghost is with you, you really, just, you really think more about what you do before you do it. Huh? You, you, you do. It's like you, 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 when you, once you begin to have a relationship with, with him in a deeper way, you say, Lord, is it all right for me to do that? Are you, are you good with this? Could you show me? Lord, if I'm not supposed to do this. You wake up in the morning and you, you get, there's a need, there's a pressing thing going on. You say, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're going to lead me exactly where I'm supposed to go. And you're going to open up the door so that this decision for me is very easy. And then you begin to live your life that way. And what happens is over and again, there are the proofs of it. Over and again, God's miracle hand of power. Is on us continually. Continually. I mean, just recently, our son and, and, and daughter and grandbaby came into town. We were having the little gender party to tell what, you know, gender the baby uh, name. Oh, well, what baby, I'm not supposed to say the name. <laughs> what baby's name is going to, I mean, what gender baby is going to be. I'm, not supposed to, I'm supposed to keep quiet. I have a hard time keeping quiet. <laughs> Don't tell me if you wanted to be quiet. I mean, if it's good news, if it's bad news, I'll keep it quiet. I'll stay in confidence. I can tell anybody by the grace of the Lord. And so we had a lot of things to do. We were just all over town, you know, with the car and everything just going just fine. And didn't, you know, they, we had to take them to the airport. And, you know, of course, we were pressed for time. It's always, we're always pressed for time. We're always in a hurry. Can't get it all done. Got so much to do. Got him dropped off at the airport. As soon as I dropped him off at the airport, transmission started going out of the car. Yeah. As soon as, got, as, soon as everything's done, transmission starts going. And the transmission lasted just at the parking lot out here. <laughs> and Daniel had to just be coming by right about the same time. <laughs> this is the way he does it all the time. This is the way it works all the time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then we called up the place about the transmission. They said, oh, yeah, it's covered. You don't have to pay anything for it. Bring it over here. <laughs> you just start acknowledging the Lord and he'll begin to direct your path. He'll begin to direct your way. He'll plan out your life for you. And then all you have to do by acknowledging him and saying, Lord, I just... He doesn't want us to figure anything out. He just wants to say, Lord, I want you to lead me. I want to be led by you. And because we say that, that is so simple. What could be more complicated? You don't have to go sit in the corner and wait till you get a vision. All you had to do is say, Lord, I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me. And he takes that. He says, okay, I will. But he's going to try our hearts. 
He comes with fire to try us. I tell you, I tell you, gold that is tried by fire is far superior to that gold that you dug out the ground. That gold that came just raw like it is in nature is not as wonderful as the gold that's been tried in the fire. That gold, that element is superior. That's been tried. Hallelujah. That's been purified. Hallelujah. I want you to know Father's doing that. He's trying us. The blood of Jesus Christ washed us from our sins and cleansed us. Gave us a new spirit and gave us a new heart. But he comes and he tries us. He perfects the things that are concerning us. He shows us very plainly, very clearly what's not supposed to be allowed in our life. We go through some challenging situations because he wants us to know that we can trust him. That he will be faithful to his promise. It might look bleak, but all you got to do is stand there and say, I know all things work together good for good for me. Now, if I make some stupid decision, get off of some wickedness, there ain't nothing working together. You just need to repent. Huh? Right? And then get back on track. But as long as you walk in with the Lord, not being an idiot. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Hallelujah. Walk in. Oh, yeah, you can. I don't care what's going on. Come on. You get a bad report. I mean, I get a bad. Re there's, there's a number of bad reports I've got in the you know over the past six months. And I looked at him. I said, "Thank you, Lord. I know that you right now are doing something mighty on my behalf. Yeah. Because it just it can't take me by can't take me by surprise. Papa's on my side. He's gonna take." He, Haman got all upset because Mordecai didn't bow down to him. And because Mordecai didn't bow down to him and recognize him and go with it the way he wanted to do it, Mordecai hated him and thought to kill him and said, I'm not going to kill him, I'm going to kill all his people. We saw how that worked out. That's the way it works out every time for those who put their trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Dear people, I am so excited about what God the Holy Spirit is purposed to do with our life. I am just anxious to get on with it. I am just, I, it, the, the things that he is purposed to do with you and to do with me, to do with this church, not only here in San Diego, but throughout the world, is the most amazing opportunity, an unimaginable opportunity. Career and activity of our life. And then it just goes, after you get finished with that, you just get raptured up in heaven, then it goes to a whole nother level. Hallelujah. I want you to go home tonight and I want you to crawl into your bed and be able to say, Lord, I thank you that you will minister to me tonight in my dreams. You will visit me here in the night. I want you to lay down in the Holy Ghost. I want you to lay down in the presence of the Lord. And I want you to wake up in the morning refreshed by the things of heaven. I don't want you to live in torment and strife and, and, and that, that you would somehow participate with because you're trying to solve your problems with your own arm of flesh, with your own insights, with your own arguments, with your own ability, with your own ideas. Give it up yes. to Jesus. You're not fixing nothing. You'll just make it worse if you haven't figured that out yet. Give yourself a couple more years of doing it your own way and you'll have to discover before long. You might as well stop while you're ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, there's a lot of people don't like that. They, they make fun of that. They don't see the sense of it. Huh? Any more than they see the sense of joy. And you got to be pretty, you got to be pretty lost to not see the sense of joy. You know what I'm saying? You got to be pretty far away from heaven not see the sense of joy. But is how that Papa brought 
a great outpouring of heaven upon the earth. And I love it. Hallelujah. Ha! Ah, it is the first evidence that the river of living water is pouring out of your innermost being. He's brought to us. Joy for morning. Garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oil of joy. Garment of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, the garment's like, it's a mantle. When, 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 many times in the New Testament, the word in duo is translated put on. But it, in duo speaks of a, of a, a cloak, a mantle. We've been given a mantle. We've been given mantle. Of Christ Jesus, we'd be given the mantle of His anointing. The prophets described it as the mantle of the mantle of praise. I know what Elisha did when he came up against the opposition. He took the mantle and dealt with the opposition. He took the mantle and he applied it to the need, and a miracle took place, and the waters parted. Because there was no bridge, he needed to get across the, the water. And the mantle that he had received was provision enough for him to deal with the obstacles, to deal with the challenges. I tell you, you have a mantle that you have received from God, a mantle of glory and power and divine authority that has fallen upon you from heaven. A mantle immeasurable. A, man, a mantle und, und, undefinable. A mantle that... It seems that few have even begun to tap into, and as soon as somebody begins to tap into it, they're going to have an anointing to preach. They're going to have an anointing to lay hands on the sick, and they're going to begin. To be, they're going to get healed. They're going to have an anointing to see changes take place in the earth. So, same kind of passions and the same kind of desires that were in Christ Jesus fills the heart of those who believe. And God has given this anointing to everyone who's been born of the Spirit. You receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now, Father, I want you to grow in these things and mature in these things. They're yours, but you're going to have to quit complaining. You're going to have to quit doubting. You're going to have to quit listening to all the, the suggestions of Satan, all the lies of the enemy. Hallelujah. I recognize that you've been given a joy. Uh, that, that the world can't take away and a peace that the world can't take away. You, if, you've got, if you've got joy sometimes and don't have it at other times, you, you're been, you've been being robbed. If you have peace sometimes and don't have it at other times, you're being robbed. Yeah, I have things attack my peace. I just don't let it come in and steal it. You know what I'm saying? They come, things come banging on the door, threatening me, screaming out, saying this and saying that. I said, like, I just, you know how I deal with it? The most threatening circumstances. I'm yours, Lord. I'd like to come home right now if you'd like to. Whatever you want to do with my life, I'm happy with that. Can I just stand here and praise you? Thank you. How when you don't even care? I don't even care. When you talk with total abandonment, it's what makes the warrior brave in the battle because he's already he's already died. He's already resigned himself. I'm not coming home. I'm dead. I'm just, I'm 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 total. I've given up my life to be here in this service. I hold not my life dear unto myself. What I do hold dear unto myself is the life of Jesus Christ that I have. And I'm, gonna let, I'm, not, I'm not trading it in. I'm not letting it go. I'm not letting threats. I'm not letting accusations. I'm not letting slanders. I'm not letting everybody's opinion, or anyone's opinion for that matter, change what God gave me. What he testified in his word that I could have, what Christ Jesus came to live and die for and raise again the third day and ascend up on high. Oh, I'm telling you, if you want to get Father's attention, just start praising him. Start giving thanks in the problems and then giving, giving, giving thanks in the things that are challenges to you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a verse of scripture to you that's going to be very important to you. Okay? You ready for this? How many of you know no matter what verse of scripture I turn in the Bible to right now, it's going to be very important to you? Every one of God's words are perfect. They are tried. In other words, it will happen just like he said. You want to know what's going to happen? The wages of sin will produce death. It's the most absolute law that exists. It's a more of an exact law than that right there, which is gravity. 9.8 meters per second squared is the acceleration that took place, the effect, the influence that took place on that book. As soon as you sin, you will, you will die. There's death. The way to sin is death. God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to the flesh reap a whirlwind of destruction. Unless you repent. That's the only way to deal with it. You people think they can go on and they just go to church or they can go on, maybe not even go to church. They believe in God or believe whatever it is they believe and they can continue on doing whatever they want to do because it's a free country. Or you can just say it because you've been given a free will. That's true. Whether it's a free country or not, that could be debated. I pray, praise God for the freedoms that we do have. Hallelujah. But um, the fact of it is, God's not going to be mocked. You're going to find out. It ain't going to work out for you. I've seen people doing things wrong, and I say, well, listen, you're gonna, here's what's going to happen. These things will take place unless you change. And they just look at me, you know, like I don't know what I'm talking about, roll their eyes, whatever. Or, you know, not roll their eyes while I'm talking to them, but roll their li- eyes later in their attitude. But every time I've watched, you know, every time I've watched it take place, and it's like not that I've got some great insight, it's just, I'm just telling them what the Word of God says. You do these things, I'm, I, don't have to have, I don't have to be, as it were, a prophet or have the Word of Knowledge. I've got the Word of Knowledge. This is the Word of Knowledge. Word of Knowledge, that phrase is only used one time in the Bible. The rest of it's knowledge. Knowledge, the knowledge of God, to know what He knows. Right now I know that I'm saved. Huh? I know that I know. And this is how I get to know. Here's how we know that we are born of Him. Huh? I've got a knowledge of heaven that a supernatural miracle took place. I know. I know that I'm right with God. I know I'm on my way to heaven. I know the Holy Ghost is in me. I know that Christ Jesus lives in me. I know that because of the knowledge of the Lord. And then I can tell you what, how things are going to work out in certain situations based upon the laws of God and the ways of God. Some people say... There's no law in the grace. There's all kinds of law in grace. The law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. It's the perfect law of liberty right here in the midst of this grace. Amen. Amen. The grace of God has come to teach us, every one of us, how to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. There's a whole lot of instruction and correction and direction. Amen. Somebody says, well, I would be, I would be much happier if it wasn't for uh, my wife. She's my problem. Nonsense. It's a lie. It's deception. Oh, I'd be much happier if it wasn't for my husband. It's a lie. It's a deception. You'd be just as miserable. You'd have another excuse. It'd be because your light didn't work in your room. I'd be much happier if I had a better car. I'd be much happier if I didn't have the same dog for so long. The dog won't die. And I just don't feel right about putting him down. He's like 50 years old now. Whatever, I mean, it's, it's always going to be something. It's always something. For me, there's nothing. It's not going to be nothing. Nothing can stand between me and God. Nothing can touch my relationship with the Lord. And that's why then I'm able to move with him and change the things that need to be changed. I'm not a prisoner of it. When, you got, when a circumstance is causing you problems, you're a prisoner of that circumstance. When a situation is causing you problems, you're a prisoner of that situation. Whether it's a job or 
relationship. You're in prison. You're in prison. If you were liberated and walking in relationship with the Lord and it wasn't able to take mastery over you or take control over you or affect your emotions, affect your attitude, then you would have authority over it and it would change. We're inviting you to come on in here tonight. We're inviting you to come on in. Would you like to come in? Yes. Would you like to come into the realm of authority? <laughs> Would you like to come into the realm of divine power and divine ability? Would you like to have a relationship with the Lord that nothing can touch or shake or hurt or harm in any way? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Because you first loved me. And you poured your love inside of me. And it comes flowing out like a river. Oh, a peace that the world can't take away. Undisturbed, a relationship that nothing, absolutely nothing, no power can separate you from this manifest presence and this glory of this relationship. Nothing, nothing, nothing present or things to come. Nothing in this world or in the world to come. Nothing except for your own will. It's you. People come sit down, they want to tell me about their problems and their issues, and they've got a list, and it's everybody else's fault. And they might be willing to share 50-50, but reality of it is, the whole problem has nothing to do with anyone else. It's 100% your problem. Because nobody crawled inside of you and having your attitude for you. It's just the way it is, people. Papa's really, truly liberated us. He's liberated us. He's brought us into a place of total and absolute freedom where nothing can touch us or separate us from the manifest presence. Nothing. No power. No power. No power. No power. No power. If you could just understand that, you would immediately grow and mature in the anointing Beyond what you can even begin to think about. Faith would begin to work in your life in a realm that you just, I know, are desperate for. But somehow it evades you. You think it's something else. I'm going to tell you right now. Just begin to get thankful. Begin to worship God. Begin to turn everything over to Him. Quit trying to fix your own problem. Quit trying to fix your own issues. Let God be your healer, protector, deliverer. Let, him, let, him, let God be your perfecter. Let God be your way maker. Let God plan out your life for you. Let God tell you how you're going to live. Find yourself doing the will of the Father, being conformed to the image of the Son, doing it Father's way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praising Him. Praising Him. Just praising Him. Praising Him. Praising Him. Giving thanks. Giving thanks. Somebody said to me, they said, well, listen, what, I, you know, I got this terrible situation going on at home with my spouse situation. Some things lost, some things looking like they're going to be lost. And I really got one answer. I just tell people all the time, put it on the altar and offer, offer it to the Lord now. Make it a sacrifice. Take it and hand it to Papa and say, Father, this is yours. I give it to you. I want to worship you with this now. He, a tragedy? Yeah, tragedy. A loss? Something very important to you? An intense situation? It's not going to be, it's going to pale in the face of what Abraham did with Isaac. And he took and he offered him. And he worshiped the Lord. And over and again, we see God call men to come and worship him with the things dearest to them. Precious to them. You know, David sinned against the Lord and he numbered Israel. 
And it was a sin because when he numbered Israel, he was doing two things. He was beginning to put his, his confidence in numbers. Not in Papa. And also the result of it was for him to step over into a realm of boastfulness. And Father's not going to have anybody that he allows getting that close to him glory in anything. Uh-uh. So, you know, the Lord said, okay. And he knew. He knew he was in trouble. He knew. And, uh, and just because David was a mighty man of God, fully anointed of God, he still had a seer. God still talked to him either through Nathan or Gad. That's the way, that's the way it is. That's the way God is. He said, well, you know, you don't know who I am. I'm a priest. I'm a king and I'm a prophet. Shh. When Father wants to speak to you, he's going to bring his Nathan. He's going to bring his Gad. Huh? Because he's going to have authority over your life. I don't care who you are. That's yeah. the way it works. Yeah. And Nathan and Gad were in the school of the prophets. People just want to be loners. They want to think that they can do whatever. Look, you, everything you think and everything that you do and everything that you believe needs to be evaluated in the life and in the light, rather, of many witnesses. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God and God, God, look, this isn't about how smart you are or I am. This is about whether or not we're being led by the Holy Ghost or being tricked and tripped up. That's right. And that's why we need the company of God's people who know God and have Amen. special giftings and insight, Amen. know how to submit ourselves to them. Mm -hmm. yes, Amen. Amen. Because you're going to err. You're going to err without the company of the saints. True. You'll go, that's why those that go out from among us are manifested, they not of us. They're erring. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't add to the word or take away from the word because if you do, you open yourself wide open to deception and take you out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. But at any rate, uh, the Lord said, okay, I'll give you three choices. I'm going I'm to judge you for what you did, David. I love you, but I'm going to judge you. I'm going to correct you. That's the way Papa is. And... The more responsibility is you have, the more correction is going to come. He corrects all of his sons. Mm -hmm. So Gad said to him, I said, well, what do you want? The Lord's going to bring it down this way. And finally, after um, David heard the choices, he said, well, I, I'm, I don't want to be chased by my enemies for three months. I'm going to put my hands in it. It was, what, was seven years of famine, chased by enemies three months. Or three days of a plague. He said, I'm gonna put my I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with put myself in the hands of the Lord. I'll go with the plague, three days of plague, because God's merciful. And seventy thousand people died because of his sin. And he stood there and suddenly he saw the angel of the Lord who had stretched out his hand. Angel of the Lord stretched out his hand and immediately Plague and disease will swipe people out. Okay? That's just one example of it. Judgment, said the Lord. And so, God, you know, responded to David and, and David's prayer and David's request. And he said, okay, I'll stop the plague. You go worship. You go make an altar. I'm going to tell you where to go get the altar. Make an altar. I want you to go build an altar and worship me. Well, I don't feel like worshiping. I don't feel miserable. Because all this bad stuff going on, it's all my fault. I was supposed to sit here and feel bad about myself. I want you to go worship me. You go worship me. And it'll stop. I'll stop it. You go worship me. I got a particular altar I want you to build at a particular threshing floor. God always builds his altars on threshing floors. You want to do a good, insightful study of how you need to change, then go and study and let the Holy Ghost minister to you about why an altar needs to be built on a threshing floor. And when he had come to purchase the threshing floor, the owner said, oh, you can have it, and you can even have the wood from my plows, and you can have the wood from my instruments that I used to harvest and to work with to use as fire for your, for your offering. What a man. And I give it to you, and David said, no. I will never worship the Lord with something that doesn't cost me dearly. It must cost me. It must be something that is a sacrifice from my life. I'm not worshiping God with somebody else's 
labor. Yeah. I'm bringing myself to him. I'm pouring myself out. I'm going to give everything I got to give. Because though David stood and watched the judgments of God, and it was harsh, and he could feel bad about it, and feel bad about himself, he knew his loving kindness and his tender mercies. He knew there was nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. It didn't matter. He said, just, just don't take your anointing from me. Just don't take, just restore unto me. Just restore to me again the joy of thy salvation. That's why when you get into a relationship with the Lord that he wants you to have, all this other stuff can't take you out because you want to be in the relationship. That you don't have any, all, the majority of all your struggles come to an end. I mean, when you find the pearl of great price, really, and, you, and, and I believe that everybody here has to some degree. You've seen the pearl of great price, but you've not really matured the way that God wanted you to mature in the relationship. If, if, you know, it's like this morning I was describing, you know, you just take the relationship with your spouse, with your wife. I mean, if you never went home, that relationship wouldn't develop. If you were home but you ignored your spouse all the time, that relationship wouldn't develop. If you, if you were, if you, I mean, you're going to have to be willing to invest in the quality of loving interaction and, and commitment and, and fidelity and, and faithfulness for that love to just get stronger and stronger. I mean, Ann and I, we've been married 29 years. My goodness gracious, I can't live without her. I, my, I'm t I can't live without her. And then we, we, we're not under any threat of divorce. <laughs> I, have, I, ne I have never cheated on my wife. I've always been faithful to my wife and always will be because of something called love. It's a beautiful, wonderful realm. And now it's that much more intense in this place with the Lord Jesus and with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Huh? Well, David, O oh Lord, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me with your, your liberating spirit. That freedom. That joy. That peace. That love. That glory. Hallelujah. So I'm dedicated to you getting strong tonight. God's dedicated to you getting strong. He wants you to be mighty. He's giving you a covenant that will result in you having more strength than Samson had. Hallelujah. Uh, it's true. God gave Samson a covenant and an anointing in that side of that covenant. And he had supernatural strength to do great feats. God's giving you a greater covenant and greater anointing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, the loan word from Hellenistic Greek... From the, from, from the Greek language, the loan word to uh, be used for the Hebrew word barik, which barik means covenant, is actually the last will and testament. So the Lord, he took and he, he wrote out a will. You know, before we left uh, to do the crusade in Nepal in 2008, because of all the threats that we had had, we never had that many threats. And it was very serious because the people on the other side had gone through a transition, got permission from their leadership to die. And I'm not kidding you. Should we back out now or do we, because these guys are going to kill us. They're told us they're going to kill us and you know who they are. They just, these guys were hardened veterans from, you know, a war that lasted more than 40 years. The malice. Insurgents against the, the uh, National Army of, of Nepal. These guys were serious, man. They're not joking around. And they probably be killing people all day long for a year. Then they'll probably kill another person. So we wrote out a will. Because we wanted to make sure that our kids were well taken care of. And I called somebody up and I said, could you come give me an insurance policy? I'd like one for two million bucks. Could you give me a two million dollar insurance policy? No problem. I said, I'm going to set them up, man. Bought a two million dollar insurance policy. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> huh? And wrote out of the wheel. And described everything. How it's all going to go to the kids. Amen. 
Huh? And, and wrote, you know, left, make, make sure that everything was all taken care of at home in the church. It's going to be just fine. Well, that's what the Lord did. He wrote out a will, a covenant of all that belongs to him. Ha. Hallelujah. Ha. Bing. Transferred into our lives. Conferred unto anyone who met the requirements of the relationship. And all you got to do, call in the name of Jesus and you meet the requirements of the relationship. All you got to do is in obedience now, give yourself to being taught of God. You know what God taught? You know what the Holy Ghost teaches us? To abide in Christ Jesus. To stay in the joy. To stay in the manifest presence. I mean, to be continually filled with the, with the Spirit of the Lord. To be continually filled with divine power and glory. But you say, well, I've got this situation. i got that circumstance. And i got this problem. And i got this issue. You need to get out of that prison. I'll set you free. You need to quit making those things so important to you. You need to go ahead and exalt God above everything else. You need to go ahead and exalt the name of Jesus above all your other stuff. Then those things won't mess with you anymore. Huh? Somebody be hollering and screaming and fussing at you and you'll just... You, you'll just be able to stay right there in the love and right there in the joy and then be able to go and pray for them and, and just begin to talk to Father for them and on their behalf and you'll have an authority and the anointing to begin to change the situation and change the circumstance, faith to begin to work through you and you go, my, this is a powerful thing that God conferred unto us when he left us all these good things, when he gave to us all this freely. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I remember the first time I was sitting in a prayer room and an angel came up behind me and lifted my hands up. Somebody said, how do you know an angel came behind you and lifted your hands up? Because I never felt that in my entire life. I didn't lift my hands up. And I never felt a presence that close to me, ever. And I've been raised in church and been around a lot of things. But I felt God come take my arms and lift them up. And I, I felt as he did, he's speaking to me, I will be here to hold you up. I will be here to lift your hands up. I will be here to strengthen you. I remember the day. I remember the evening. It was on a Sunday evening. It was in 1993 over at Claremont Church of the Nazarene. We were renting that church. They had a prayer room and I was there. And I made an appointment with God because I was reaching in. I was pressing in. God had laid upon my heart to pray for San Diego and for the coming together of ministries in San Diego to see a, a moving of the Spirit in this region. And I began to pray for it and I prayed and began to cry out to God for it in a very passionate way for about three years or more. And then the Lord opened the door for us to do what we did. God hears your prayers. He sees, you want to be used? You serious about wanting to be used? He's going to use you. And then it wasn't too long after that we started doing meetings there in, on Harbor and Rosecrans. You, you, think, you think that the enemy doesn't have repercussions against that kind of stuff? When you step out to do, he does. You're going to have to understand, you're going to have to understand how to live in a place where he can't touch you, where he can't access you. You don't think there's all kinds of fallout right and left? Of course there is. But it can't touch me because my heart's not in that stuff. It's not in it. My heart's in him. And all the things that I have right now, I'm just a steward of them. Whatever I have, I'm just a steward of them. They don't even belong to me. It's not mine. It's his. For his purposes. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I keep my tithe before the Lord because that's my token reminder to remind me that everything I got, God gave it to me and he's promised to give me more as long as I don't forget who gave it to me. He's going to take it and continue to multiply it. That's why the offering is so important to me because I still see the worship in it. I still see the connection of relationship in it. I still see the opportunity of honoring him. I still see how it gladdens his heart over something so silly as money and finances and material things. He knows how important it is to us. And that's why it so gladdens his heart. It's it's almost unimaginable to recognize that what you do can gladden his heart. But it truly does. And what we do saddens his heart too. And when you realize it, all of a sudden you begin to think a lot more about your things that you're going to decide to do. And the impact it's not going to have on you, but the impact it's going to have on him. Because you love him. You don't want to hurt him. You want to bless him. The, 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 the notion that a human being has the capacity to bless God is an amazing thing. But we do. And he loves us. He loves us already, but he loves us even more for it. Because of the relationship love that's in it. It's true. I'm telling you, it's true. You're going to have to learn how to live in a relationship with the Lord where nothing else is attached or affixed to your heart if he's going to use you more. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to be assailed with all kinds of situations and circumstances. And if it has an attachment to your affections, it's going to mess you up bad. I used to, honestly, I used to just get, I, I, there was a period of time in my life where I'm like, you know, I know I've got a special assignment from the Lord. I know. I don't have any, any, anybody to tell me. You know, I know I've got an assignment for the Lord. I know what God's called me to do. And I, I really got gun shy about bringing anybody alongside of me because it's like as soon as I bring somebody alongside me, take them somewhere with me, bang, knocked out, taken out, you know. Because they sit around alongside me and then they begin to experience the repercussions that is like white noise to me and they fall out. They can't take it. But people, you and I, we need to grow up more. We need to understand how to hide, be hidden away in him and live his life because he wants to use us more. And there has to be the capacity in our lives to be able to deal with the powers of darkness that would come out against us to try to destroy us and stop us. We have to understand how to be hidden in him that we might execute his divine authority and will and stop every power of darkness, every spiritual wickedness in the in, 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 in a heavenly realm. I mean, all hell can't stop one little child full of the Holy Ghost using the name of Jesus. <laughs> Fact of it is that a child will probably be more successful than the adult because they have less attachments to this earth and worldly cares. True. Huh? I'm believing God that everybody in this place will be baptized in the Holy Ghost in such a way as it was described by the prophet Joel, in such a way as it was described also by Peter when he applied what Joel said, that the Spirit of the Lord would come upon you and you'd prophesy. Your son, all flesh, your sons and your daughters, and even your servants. Everybody got around you. Tonight you're here with me. Tonight I get, to, I get to impart into your life the things that God has given me by His grace for the purpose of imparting these things. Oh, we just want you to receive. We just want you to love us. We want you to just hook up with us. We want you to quit browbeating yourself and beating yourself up and joining in with the song that hell is singing against you. Huh? And we want you to rather instead take this wonderful acceptance that is in the beloved, this access that you have into the presence of the Lord and begin to dance and sing with Almighty God over all the good things which he has done for you and me. Oh, oh, he has done great things. Oh, he has done great things. I will rejoice for he has done, he's done great. Oh, oh, he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. Oh, I will rejoice because he has made me glad. 
I mean, when God makes you glad, you can't do anything else but rejoice. And in his presence, there's glad. In his presence, there's joy. And, I, and I'm in his presence all the time. I'm living there in this realm, this Holy Ghost realm, this realm of joy and rejoicing, of giving thanks and praise. When the enemy threatens me, when the kingdom of finance tells me I am done, When men come out to say, there's no way that you're going to be able to win. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. We left church one night and my wife and I got a, a letter. And it was a letter that basically said... We're taking your land from you. We're taking your house from you. And all the improvements. And when we read that, and we started laughing. We got so drunk in the Holy Ghost. Because he made us glad. Because our hearts weren't attached to it. We got drunk in the Holy Ghost. We, <laughs> we began to rejoice because he made us glad. Because he's there to strengthen us. He knows. He's looking. He's looking. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? He's looking. How are you going to respond? Is your heart towards me or is your heart towards that? Will you worship me with it? Huh? God worked a miracle for us to where at least with that, within the framework of, of the things that we owed on that, we, you know, immediately went and got fish and game and they bought it out. Just like happened with the church, we immediately, you know, we said, look, you know, we want you to buy this thing out. We're, we may be underwater on it, but we want you to buy this thing out. And we, we left even. We left owing no bills. I think we left maybe owing a thousand bucks, but we got that paid off now, right? Hey? We can go with that. Are you with me? Come on now. Come on, it's a miracle. Give me a break. There's Papa taking care of us. Huh? That was only like three million. No big deal. Right? What are you concerned about? I hope not three dollars. I remember the time where I was concerned about three, maybe thirty, maybe three hundred, maybe three thousand. Three G's, man. Look at thirty thousand. I mean, what is that stuff? It's very, very important when we worship Father with it because He knows how meaningful it is to us. He knows that 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 could be our daily living. That's why it was so important with the woman with the two mites, you know. He said she gave more than anybody else. It would touch Jesus. He's standing over the offering basket. It's Jesus. And he's watching what everybody puts in. Like people put in something and he goes. He's looking. He looks at what you put in. People try to sneak an offering. People feeling a little embarrassed, they come and they ain't nothing in the hand. They kind of sneak an offering. <laughs> they ain't nothing in the hands. That's lying. Don't do that. That's a lion. That's cheating. That's lying. And just sit there in your seat. We'll point and laugh at you later. <laughs> no, we won't. We'll pray for you so that you come under Holy Ghost conviction and start doing what's right. <laughs> He's sitting there looking. And he sees a woman with two mites. She gives two mites. What does he say? She gave more than all the, of them. Who gave out of their abundance. Because she gave of her living. She gave what she was going to eat on. She's not eating now. Huh? Oh, I guarantee you she ate. As much as the woman who gave to the prophet of the bread first. <laughs> and then there was, no, there was no diminishing of the meal and the oil for the rest of her life. Huh? That's a lot of provision. Set for life. Set for life. I just want to give more. I want to give him more. Lord, let me give you more. Father, entrust me with more so I can give you more. Lord, I ask you to entrust me with more so that I can do more. Lord, I, I, just, I want to be used by you more than anything else. I, I love your presence. I love your glory. I, 
whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. If you want me to go be a farmer in the backwoods of nowhere, I'm happy to go do that. If you want me to go and conquer the world, I'll go do that. I just want to do something for you and do it with everything that's within me, with all of my might. Please, Papa, please use me. That's, a, that's all. And, he put, and then he put that desire there. That's the spirit of the son. Saying, behold, I've come to do your will. I'm here to do your will. I'm here to live for you. So whatever you want, I'm here to live for you. What a life. What a life. And it's not a religious ideology. It's not some kind of fantasy. It's really a genuine interaction with Almighty God. It's truly the living reality of what's actually taking place. You get to be right in the middle of what's really happening. Rosanna. <laughs> Elizabeth. Every one of you. Anne. Daniel. Joshua. Ali. Anna. I get to command them. The Lord's allowed me to command them. Hang on, huh? I command them. And then, you know, I'm supposed to do the same thing for you because God told me to take the rule over you just like I took the rule over my house. If you can't rule your own house, how can you rule the house of God? But that's always a little bit challenging. <laughs> huh? Because nobody that's older than me wants me to be their father. In the spirit, usually, because of the competition in America. But that's another subject, and we're not going to even go into that tonight. I'm not going to go. I don't even want to go. I just asked the Lord, please, Lord, I don't even want to deal with that anymore. Can I not deal with that subject anymore? He didn't say amen. I guarantee you, he didn't say amen. He doesn't answer. When he doesn't answer, he's, it's like, you know good and well that you're going to have to do what I told you to do. Huh? No matter what it costs you, you do what I tell you to do. You say the way I say it. And I'm going to get better every year at saying it. You know, I understand with greater wisdom and insight, with greater anointing how to do it. The thing about it is, is from the very beginning, I was purposed to do it God's way. No matter whether or not I did it rough and gruff and crude and intense. And I could have done it more, you know, gentle and, you know, with greater wisdom. doesn't matter. It's still the same. I, I'm still doing what God told me to do. Huh? And you know what? People don't realize this. They don't realize, people don't realize how faithful God is. How committed, how loyal He is. He's loyal. He's so loyal to me, He'll stand behind me even when I do say it wrong. He will, because He's just loyal. Because He put His anointing on me. And I can show you many verses of Scripture in the Bible to prove this. I can show you many events in the Word of God. He's loyal. And he wants to be loyal to you, too. Yes. Huh? So don't mess around with me messing things up for yourself. Are you with me? Yes. Huh? Yes. Papa's really loyal. He's very jealous. He's got a jealous love over everybody who's ever called upon his name. Everybody in here. He's got a jealous love, a loyalty to you. He wrestles you down to the ground. He pleads with you. He begs you. Huh? He won't let up. You his. It's a miracle service tonight. Of course, I'm going for some different miracles. But I expect that nobody leaves out of here sick. I bind sickness in the name of Jesus. I break its stronghold and its power, its effect and its influence. Pain and disease of the body immediately goes away when the anointing is present. All you have to do is receive that wonderful realm of heaven that's made available to you and all that other stuff will go out. The good stuff comes. When the good stuff comes, the bad stuff leaves. Huh? It does exactly what darkness does when the light comes. I'm going to read a scripture to you. It's very important to you. How many of you know, no matter where I open up in the Bible? Okay. <laughs> that was one big parenthetical statement. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
When I come to church, it's like going to heaven. It isn't a struggle for me to go to church any more than a struggle to go to heaven. Don't let the enemy lie to you and torment you and harass you and make you think that your living room is better than being in heaven. Or the gym. Or something else. The banks of the river. Fishing. There's nothing so wonderful as this church. Father, I thank you that Emily never had migraine headache ever again. I thank you, Father God, that these things that have tried to afflict and torment her body, that they will not be able to in Jesus' name. You foul spirit of hell. You leave the property of God alone. I command it. You have to obey me and listen to me. So get with the program. Amen. And it's God's program. So. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, de Bereshita. You know, I really felt like I would, I would minister tonight out of, out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That is one radical book of the Bible. And I might say something about it, but right now I want you to open up your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. My wife knows where I'm going. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. It's a great scripture, isn't it? How many of you understand this verse of scripture? How many of you... It's really a, it's a motivation for you. It's a theme to you. Well, maybe it hasn't been, but let it be tonight, after tonight. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12 says, Don't be lazy. He says, Verse 10, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, and that you have ministered to the holy ones, the saints, and continue to, do, to minister. He's not going to forget. Paul didn't forget. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope, even until the end. Don't let up. Don't stop. Give yourself to the ministry of the church. Give yourself to the ministry of the saints. That you do not be slothful. Don't be lazy. Don't be slothful. Don't be slow to do it. Don't say, well, you know, we're going to get around to it. Don't procrastinate. Don't let somebody else do your work. Of course, I discovered that the more you do in the kingdom of God, the greater the, you know, the anoint, there's an increase in anointing to, in there. So if you want me to do your work, I don't mind. Because <laughs> the reward is good. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He, I'm telling you right now. Father pays well. He Hallelujah. The Lord's getting ready to set something up. And, uh, <laughs> I, you know, the Lord laid on my heart to last year. I didn't really even want to go to southern Nepal. I wanted to go western Nepal because I just know that Father's going to do a tremendous thing in southern Nepal. And today I got another invitation from Nepal to go to western Nepal with a very large group of churches, which was different than the Assemblies of God. But the person who was my translator, both in 2006 and 2008, is going to be here on May 17th. And he is, the, he is over the Assemblies of God Bible School for the Nation. So he's going to be here with us. We love him so much. His, his name is Bal Krishna. <laughs> I thought, you should change your name, man. 
<laughs> Which, you know, means Lord Krishna. Right. And maybe you don't understand that, but the Krish Krishna is a Hindu god, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But he's a Holy Ghost filled man. He loves God. He's just filled with the Spirit. Papa said something uh, beautiful. And, you know, I, I, I don't really, I don't like getting on an airplane and flying. I don't like going anywhere. I don't like, I don't really like being in Nepal necessarily. But I'll do it because the glory, because the anointing, because it's Papa's will. That's what he wants me to do. Whatever he wants me to do. What is it that you're going through right now? What's going on in your life? What, tri what fiery trial do you find yourself in? Could you see that you're actually living out the purposes of God because he wants to take that situation and try you as gold tried in the fire and he wants to bring forth perfection in your life? I'm going to prove to you. I'm going to start right here with this verse of scripture. Then I'm going to wrap up with James 1, chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. Okay? And who knows, I might go over to 1 Peter 1, 7, but I'll just leave that for the notes right now. Hallelujah. This is what Papa's saying to you. This is what Father's saying to you. You know, I was on my, I was crying out to God. I was going to say on my face, but I was actually on my back. But I was on my face spiritually. Crying out to the Lord between service. Lord, what is it that, what is it? What is it that will bring the change? What is it that will meet the need? What is it, oh God, that will cause your people to advance in the cause that, you've, that you're passionate about us fulfilling? Speak to me, Lord. This is what he spoke. What I've been speaking to you. Don't be lazy. Don't be slothful. But Followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And you know, over and over again, you see this word patience, and it's used in some places that you just like, why is it so important? It's one of the highlights of the things that would actually earmark, as it were, an apostle. Paul said, we're shown to be apostles by patience. By signs and by wonders and by miracles. He, he, there, there's the testimony and the call to this patience, which is an endurance, a perseverance, with a persistency to have it. It's yours. You're not going to weary. It's yours. You're going after this thing. You want to inherit what God has for you? then you're going to have to be willing to stay faithful with the program, endure whatever comes your way. And the best way to do that is to sing and shout and praise and dance about uh, and, and, and have a good time in the Holy Ghost saying, Father, I know that your will be done. I know, God, that you're watching over everything, that you're perfecting me and protecting me. Oh, God, and you're providing everything that I have need of. Is the best way for you to live this out. It's through patience and faith that you get to inherit all the things that God has planned for your life. Don't give up. Don't, don't, don't be overwhelmed because it's not working out according to your plan and the fashion of your timeline. I'm telling you, the example is going to be Abraham. So that's what the Lord going to do. He's going to start talking about Abraham and how the great multiplication that was promised unto him. And think about all the things that he went through. I think that Jubilee counts ten trials by that time. I know most people never read the book of Jubilee, but the book of Jubilee, as far as I'm concerned, should have been left in the canon. And it was up until the, ninth, up until the 20th century. Jubilee was there. Jubilee's, Jubilee's a wonderful book of the Bible he went through a lot of things Abraham went through a lot of things before he ultimately heard that promise I swear to you now I know I know Abraham that anything I ask you you'll do it you will not withhold anything from me now I swear that multiplying I shall multiply you think about all the things that Abraham went through before he got to that and then he says that that, and now Paul actually puts it forth as though that was the kind of like the moment of the initiation of the plan. He's just getting started now. 
Huh? He went through all of that he went through for almost 30 years just to get started into a whole nother realm of participating with God and Father's covenant plan for the nations of the world, for all the seed of men. Past, present, and into the eternal future. One man stands. One man, Abraham. Amazing. Papa's just looking for somebody. These are the last days. And Father's looking for those who would know him who would know him. Moses knew God. Abraham knew God. The Lord has made a way through this new covenant that every man, anyone, whosoever wills, may know him. Those who know their God should do exploits. Mm -hmm. There are things, there are plans, there are positions that God has still on hold for those who will step up into relationship with him to do things that will turn the tide, that will change the condition of humanity. It's true. true. As much as it was for Pop Seymour, one person, one man of the wrong nationality, as it were, ethnicity, an African whose family was born into slavery and he was born into slavery and lived under great persecution and segregation. He didn't get mad when they told him he had to sit out on the porch. He couldn't come into the company of the saints. He didn't get mad. He sat there with humility and brokenness and said, I just so want to hear about God. These men in there, they know about God. I'm, 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 I, 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 no matter what I got to through, I gotta go through to hear about God, I want to hear about God. They know about the Holy Ghost. God was trying that man on that porch. He was trying him when he got kicked out of the assembly. No, you can't come in here. You're a colored fella. You got to get out. He's been tried. His gold was tried in the fire. And through perseverance and endurance of such persecution, of such rejection, he laid hold on a promise to change the condition of the church to this day. To this day. To this day. It's estimated that there were maybe, at most, 50, 60 people in those meetings to start with. And that from those meetings, there is an estimated 750 million today. A little over a hundred years later. One person who wouldn't be denied. He wouldn't be denied. He wouldn't be stopped. Persecution wasn't going to touch him. Rejection wasn't going to touch him. Huh? He wasn't second class. He was no class. He was disqualified coming and going. No one was going to give him a permission. No one was going to give him a consignment. No one was going to support him. Come on now. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Just turn with me quickly to James. It's where we're at. If you were allowed to go into the throne room now and visit with Father and say, Father, please show me on the map where we're at. He'll be able to show you. Here's where you're at. He'd show you in his plan. This is where you're at, sitting in the abiding place, because this is what I have a plan for you, and this is what I have planned for the ministry that you're in right now. His finger's on it right now. Here's where you're at, and here's where I want you to go. And there's a fire that you've got to go through. There's things that you've got to be willing to be patient. You can't get, you can't start despairing and become impatient and start grumbling and start doubting and start giving up. You get, you get busy. You believe the good promises that I've made concerning you. Don't you hold nothing back from me because I won't hold nothing back from you. And I'm telling you, Angelica, that prophecy, the, str the strength of it will get stronger and stronger. Do you believe me? 
And the more you're willing to keep yourself from the, the defilements of this world and the mixtures of this world, the purer it'll be. And that goes for every person in this place. The Lord wants everyone to begin to prophesy out of that same realm. Ooh, da basta beretika malo sapane. Hallelujah. 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 And you know, I know that right now, there, the Spirit of the Lord has been talking to me about, yeah, you know, it, 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 they're in class. You're in class. And you're being instructed. And these words are going forth. And those who will take a hold of the words of life and do them, the results are going to be such that there really won't be time for class anymore. Uh -huh. The living reality of the divine power and glory of it will be, will, will, will just take over. We'll just take over. I'm waiting. I'm in expectation. I'm here tonight with a purpose. To see something that man cannot do. An overwhelming cloud of divine glory begin to move in response to a bunch of hungry and passionate hearts who are desperate for God, desperate for the things of the Spirit, desperate for heaven. Yeah, that's us. That's us. That's us. That, that's us. That's us from our day of our birth. It's us from the day of our birth. And will be us to the day of our death. I love living in the context of the miracle that we're in right now. Financial miracle. Bigness miracle. Because it's like God doing things with a few that a great company would barely be able to afford or do. Huh? Because God takes glory and delight. In those kinds of things. He loves to use that which is weak and despised. And not regard as man as fit or able. And so I'm going to stay right there. And I encourage you to stay right here with me. As we seek the Lord. Because we want to see a great moving of the Spirit. I, I feel in my heart. I feel this. I feel that throughout the churches of San Diego, that there is a crying out to God to know Him. That there is right now a crying out to God for more. God's been making people hungry in the city, in the church of this city. They don't really know, many of them don't really even know how to begin. They don't even know how to begin to turn the ship of the church, as it were. They don't know how to begin to even address the things that are standing in the way. But God is going to hear and answer the prayer. And fire of God's going to fall upon the churches of the city. Watch what happens. He's going to do it. The churches have to be right for the harvest to come in. I mean, that was really the prayer and that was the passion of what we're going after in 1995 and 1996. That the Lord allowed us to run for four or five years. Just going after ministering to the churches, bringing in ministry to build the churches up in faith. Everybody who would wanted to participate. And boy, it was glorious. It was glorious. I could say, wow, that was glorious. I had many older ministers come to me from different parts of the world and say, never been in anything like this. Heard of it from the old days of the 40s, but never been in anything like this. This is glorious. And it was glorious, but I don't want to go back because I know that was preparation for something in the future. And I remember, I remember when, when all of that land was gone and all that opportunity was gone and I found myself at, in a hotel room. Went back in one of the, go, go from this big property and all that stuff going on for five years and now I'm over in a hotel suite on Hotel Circle. And I'm like, Lord... Lord, but his presence came so intense. I'm like, I said to my wife when we got with the meeting, I said, if we need to stay in the, in the hotel to have this kind of glory, I'm happy to stay here for the rest of my life. I'm, go, ahead, we'll, go ahead and book, we can, maybe we could buy the place. It's fire. 
It's a process. I know I'm being led. Do you know that you're being led? Do you believe what God said? Are you being led of the Spirit of God? Are you walking in the Spirit and living by the Spirit? Are you living out His life? Surely you are if you called upon the name of the Lord. Surely it's true if you responded to God because He's a faithful God that will do what He said He would do. It's just not going to work out like you think. There's a different process than what you've ever imagined. <laughs> I can think about all these great moments in time of things that God did with my life. I can see the thousands and even tens of thousands of people rushing the, the altar. I've seen thousands of people rushing the altar in Seal Beach, California. See many great things. I don't want to go back to any of them because all they were was preparation for what God's getting ready to do in the future. Do you know that God's getting ready to do something great with you in the future? Yes. Do you have a promise that you can have patience and faith to go after? Yes. Do you even have a promise? Do you have a promise? Do you see a promise of an inheritance of something that God has spoken to you and said he was going to do? I tell you, you got yourself a whole book here of promises. Start reading them. You know, they'll captivate your heart. They will rapture your soul. They'll, they'll, they'll become all, all that is meaningful to you. It will become all that you desire and all that you want, all that you lay hold, oh, lay hold on. You'll take everything that you have and give it in exchange for that pearl, for that treasure. It's true. I'm going to tell you right now, get ready. Get ready. I'm getting ready. You're getting ready. We readying you. You in training. Somebody said, oh, man, I'm in training. I'm just, well, I'm sore. I don't feel like going to, to training tonight. Get the training. Huh? I'm tired. I'm taxed. Get over here. Start again. Get back in the blocks. We're still working on the takeoff. Are you with me? But do you see the goal? Do you have the promise of the inheritance? If you do, then you can have endurance. If you don't, then you'll perish. For without a vision, the people perish. If you can't see the promise, if that's not right there before you, if that's not living before you, if that's not a reality to you, you're going to faint. You're going to weary. And you're not going to reap. See the promise. I have a very real promise in Christ Jesus. <laughs> hey, it's good. I'm telling you right now, it's good. It's good. It's good. I know that Peter and I know that I know that John and the other disciples, many of the other disciples, had to minister to people that they knew were going to be thrown to the lion. They had to minister to people that they knew were going to be martyrs, going to be killed and tortured in many different ways. They were going to be martyrs for the name of Jesus. So did James. James knew that too. Man, the brave hearts of those first century Christians that were willing to go all the way. They would not count their life dear unto themselves that they could obtain a prize. People don't get soft in your lullaby circumstances. Huh? -huh. Don't get soft. Don't get soft, man. Uh uh. Step up. Don't get all, don't get all enchanted by worldly cares and earthly things. Come on, man. Come on now. Be hardened veterans for the kingdom of God. Be good soldiers that know how to endure hardness, challenges, difficult stuff. Father, make you brave. And make you brave. Make you bold like a lion. And make you brave. Hallelujah.
I know that by I know that he gives the grace, and the grace is here tonight. He gives the grace so that we could endure anything. We can endure anything. He gives the grace. No matter prison, we could endure it. He'd give us the grace. If we were to go there, he'd give us the grace. Where you're at right now, he's giving you the grace. It's just that if you were shut in prison, you'd be a bit more dependent upon him, hopefully. Those of you who are discontented with your job, you need to learn from jo Joseph. Those of you complaining about situations, you need to learn from Joseph. Those of you who don't know how to move forward with God, you need to hear the patience of Job. Hear the patience of Job. When we talk about the patience of Job, when James refers to the patience of Job, we're talking about his endurance. You see that? What he endured knowing God's faithful. I'm coming out of this thing. I'm coming out of this thing. You watch what's going to, look what's, you watch what God's about to do with my life. Job, go read Job. He, he knew, I'm coming out of this thing. I know my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. And she'll stand upon the earth in the last day. Uh, though, my, though my body, my flesh should be turned into dust, yet shall I come forth from the grave. I mean, come on, man. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. What a hope. What a hope. What a hope. The one thing that describes and defines hope for me above all other things is the resurrection from the dead. And usually hope is used in that context. What a hope! I shall live! Though I die, yet shall I live! And see His glory. Hallelujah. And nothing that you're going through right now compares to you dying. <laughs> Hallelujah. I die, I know I shall live and behold his glory. I should do more than that. But inherit with him all the things which Christ Jesus has been given. I should sit down with him in his throne. As he sat down with his father in his throne. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm living for that day. I've got myself a heavenly vision. Hallelujah. I'm going to be faithful to the heavenly vision. I'm going to go, I'm go take and strip Satan of those things that are in his hands and <laughs> deliver people out of the power of Satan. Bring them to God. That's the heavenly vision. That's how Paul described it. His heavenly vision is my heavenly vision, your heavenly vision too, because there's only one heavenly vision. That's the heavenly vision that Jesus had. Amen. Amen. The opening up of the prison doors, the setting of the captives free. We can go everywhere and do that. In this, in this building, in this meeting, whether it's Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night or Friday night or Tuesday night or Thursday night, there's something going on in this building every night, Saturday night. It's all about seeing people liberated from everything that would torment and everything that would destroy them and filled with every good thing. You set your heart to it now. Don't diddle-dally around the periphery. Go for the heart of it. Go for the, right, go for the right thing, the right result. Walk in the heavenly vision with all boldness and divine authority. You do the work of a deacon. If you labor in, in the kingdom, a person faithful as, as one who is a servant, which is what deacon means, serving the ministry, the scripture says, you will purchase for yourself great boldness in the faith, and I don't know how to purchase it any other way. People sit around doing nothing, you're not going to have any boldness. You're going to be timid. You'll be spooked at any little, huh? At any little shadow moving on the wall. Huh? Or what you thought was a shadow. Was this a butterfly? Or was it moth? Are you with me? Did I, nobody going to be lazy in here. Nobody's going to be slothful. You're going to get with the work. Ministry to the saints. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And you want to do that because, and you, you know, it's not, you don't have to do it. It's not like a law, no taskmaster here. The reality of it is, 
We're, you want to do that because you've got a heavenly vision. You see the pearl of the great price. You understand what's going on. We're just encouraging you. Don't be tricked. Don't, be, don't weary in well-doing. Don't be overwhelmed. Don't be of a doubtful mind. Don't be of an unbelieving heart. Continually speak those things which God is saying. Rehearse these things for yourself. All that God has done, all that he said. James chapter 1. We'll try to wrap it up here. Hallelujah. People, I'm going to just say, I want to say this. I don't come to you and tell you the things that I'm going to tell you that may be harsh at times without recognizing that it costs. It's a price to pay. I'm going to be faithful to God no matter what the price is to pay. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to let you know if there's something seriously wrong. I'm going to, I will come and let you know. You don't have to sit there and wonder, has he got a problem? I will come and speak directly to you, no matter what it costs me. And there's been many times I've had to do that, and many times it has cost. You know, <laughs> things could have been a whole lot easier financially for the church if I hadn't had to sort a number of very wealthy people out. Because they won't try to control and manipulate the situation. I don't mean, you know, let them pretend whatever. It doesn't matter to me, you know. You can act like that you're in charge. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You know, you can try to sit there and frown when you don't like what I'm saying. Smile when you do like what I'm saying. Act like you're sleeping when I'm going too long. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't bother me. But as soon as you cross the line with God, and he says, I want you to go sort that out. I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Here's, what, here's the way it's going to go down. Right? Well, you know, though it may, though it may result in things not being as easily accomplished from a natural perspective, Father's going to take care of it all anyways. We're just going to do what's right. We're going to have it right. We're going to have it right in this place. We're just going to have it right. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm happy. I'm happy. I was happy to see as the people that came on Friday night hungry to understand how to be, to walk in the school of spirit. I'm happy. I thank the Lord for it. I was a little concerned at about 10 minutes tell when there was only about five people there. <laughs> a little concerned. But I was glad to see everyone start showing up. To seek the Lord. We get a job to do. So you're too busy doing something else. You messed up. You got a, you, you got a wrong perspective. You don't know who you are. You don't know where you're at. You don't know what you're doing. You're not doing what God called you to do. And it, it, it can't be legislated to you by legalism or by, can't be legislated to you by any kind of control. And, then, and, then, and no one's going to do that. You, but, but, it, but you still got to recognize, wait a minute. You have a responsibility to God first. And it isn't about somebody else telling you what to do. It's about you and him and you responding to faithfully and diligently carry out his plan and commission for your life. you got to quit planning your own life and deciding for yourself what you're going to do with your time. Because you are mistaken. It's not your life, it's not your time. You want to get out of that. You want to grow up past that now. James chapter 1, verse 3. Got to start at verse 2. Now, I want you to get this tonight. I want you to get this, okay? I want everybody to get this. Maybe you should memorize it. <laughs> Brethren, count it all joy. When you're fall into or overtaken by many different kinds of trials.
Can we do that? Some of you need to do that right now. Some of you need to do that right now. You don't like the trial. You don't like the fire. Don't start saying, oh, God, send the fire. And then the fire gets here and you're like, what's going on now? Count it all joy. The fire fell. The fire came. Amen. Hallelujah. Things getting sorted out. Things getting made right. Things getting corrected. They're being, they're being organized by God the Holy Ghost so we can accomplish those things he wants us to do. You can't do much until you get organized. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, we were driving home the other day from the ranch, and I had, Daniel got me all squared away with Waze on my, on my iPad, and then I had the navigation device, and I had both Waze and navigation telling me everything that's happening. There's a police up ahead. There's a hazard just to the right. I got all this information. I'm like, man, this is like walking in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> This, 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 this is amazing. This is, this is just like being led of the Spirit, constantly knowing what's about to take place, getting ready, getting prepared. Okay, about two miles up ahead is a hazard on your right. The Lord's helping you understand these yeah. kinds of things are going down. Would you just listen? And the only way you can listen is to rejoice. If you get all emotionally wrapped up in some problem, you can't hear God. You can't hear God. Believe me. You're all emotionally wrapped up in what you want, want and what you demand. You can't hear God. You got you to distance yourself from that. It can't matter to you. It can't join itself to your heart and your affections. Take no thought of it. Take no thought of it. Don't put your heart on it because you got to go after the kingdom of God. If you don't go after the kingdom of God, you're not going to be able to receive these things that are freely given. To sit there and wonder, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with you is you wrapped up in the cares of this life. You're emotionally compromised. Hmm? There's a conflict of interest going on. You need to recluse from the world. Huh? And then the, and then, then that's what it's called? Something like that. You need, to, you need to let go of the world. So you can start hearing Papa. Huh? When someone starts by you say, I care not for these things. Yeah. You say, I tell you the Father, I care not for these things, Lord. They mean nothing to me. All that matters to me is you, Lord. I care nothing for this bed. I care nothing for this car. I care nothing for this house. I care nothing for this food. I care nothing for these things. For all these things, I love you more than these things. I just want you. You can have whatever you want. Here's my life. Take me now. I'm ready to go. Hallelujah. My wife's cried to hold my coattail. I, me too. You're not leaving me behind. I'm going with you. Count it all joy. Will you? Will you obey God? Will you obey God from here on out? Will you obey God? Do you want to get the right result? You're not going to get the right result if, you, if you're all upset now because you're going through a tribulation. You're going through a trial. You're going through a testing. You're not going to get the right result until you obey God and count it all joy. You're going to have to, in other words, the only way you can do that is you're going to have to see the bigger plan. You see, otherwise you'll be consumed with the moment. and You'll think that that's it. and You'll be all wrapped around emotionally some immediate problem. You're going to have to see the big picture, the heavenly vision. You're going to have to see the promise, the inheritance. Mm -hmm. Then all these little interruptions and all these little speed bumps along the way or whatever ain't going to aggravate you. Ain't going to bother you. Huh? That's right. you you'll know that God's preparing you. Mm -hmm. Count it all joy. Right. Knowing this. I want you to know this now. Grab a hold of that. Unline it. Knowing this. I want you to know this now. I want you to see the big picture. Knowing this. That the trying of your faith works patience. Hallelujah. Who through patience and faith inherit the promise. 
understand that the what's going on and the situations and the challenges and the testings and the evaluation and the straightening things out and the organizing things and the making things proper and right in your life to where that your responses are what they're supposed to be, your trust is what it's supposed to be, is going to work in your life perfection. This next verse. This next verse. Yeah. It's going to work in your life. Perfection. Let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and complete. Lacking, 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 lacking nothing. Fully equipped. Fully equipped. Fully equipped. I've got my eyes on the goal. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got my eyes on the divine purpose, the heavenly vision, the call of God for my life. The things that He baptized me in the Holy Ghost and baptized you in the Holy Ghost to have. The things that He birthed this church to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can everybody stand with me? Mambra mamandera, zela vale nondoye, zere mama galemea, zea mana kara shotai, kela mangela boko tari taro, zele mana mandera mandea, zea mandi otoye, zea mandera be, zela ye, zari dayala suye, zari yala mando ye do, zabi yala molo munde reviali telu saraba. Hallelujah. I count it all joy. I count it all joy, joy. I see God at work in me. I see God fashioning me. I see Him forming. I see Him developing. I see Him shaping. I see Him molding. I see Him breaking. I see Him forming. Ah, oh, I count it all joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Blessed is your holy name. Hallelujah. Well, my dear friends, family of God, people of the Lord, I'm going to give you opportunity to worship God with your tithe, with your offering, with an expectation that you'll be lacking nothing, that there is a promise that you're going to inherit, a multiplication promise. God said, I'm going to make you wealthy that I may establish my covenant. That's just one of the many promises. That's just one of the things that God doesn't want you to be lacking in. But he's not making us wealthy for any other reason but to go and reach the lost or to do more in the kingdom of God no matter what it costs. Praise God, it doesn't work on a monetary system, but it works on a faith system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I promise you tonight that all the promises of God are yes and amen, that all the promises of God are true, that everything He's promised to do for you, Brad, one, He's going to do it, Sandy. God's not going to fail. Just rejoice. Just be glad. Just be glad that He loves you. Just be glad that He cares. Just be glad that He fight for your cause. Just be glad that He's jealous over you. Just be glad that he won't let you go. Hallelujah. He's going to accomplish all those things that he said. He began a good work and he's going to finish it. That's just who he is. I'm confident of this one thing. That's, some, that's a big statement by a man like Paul. I'm, I'm confident of this one thing. That he who began a good work in you shall finish it. Hallelujah. I believe God. Say, I believe God. I believe God. 
Do you know that goes all the way up into heaven? You know that goes all the way in the throne room? It actually can be heard in the halls of glory? When God's people say things like that? Did you know that your prayers ascend up to the throne room like incense? That your praise goes up like a sacrifice, an offering that God actually can smell? God can smell it. God can smell it. He said so. And God's not a liar. I believe what he said. It's not a hyperbole or allegory or any other kind of E. Amen. 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 Get your checkbooks out. Get your wallets out. If you don't have a wallet, then you can turn in your shoes tonight. Trade them in. I don't know what we're going to do with your shoes. But you're going to give something. You're going to give something. I'm not going to let Satan rob you because you don't know how to shut up his lies. I'll shut them up for you. I'm telling you right now, I'm a shepherd. You can call me pastor or you can call me shepherd, either one. They both mean the same thing. I'm not going to stand around and watch a wolf eat on you, gnaw on you, take your stuff. Hallelujah. I'm on J. Katakina Karasto, you pray. I got a gun and I know how to use it. Amen. It's a Holy Ghost gun. It's a Holy Ghost gun. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you for the offering. I thank you for the faith that is in the offering. I thank you for the altar that is in the offering. I thank you for the worship that is in the offering. I thank you for the honor, the honor of you that is in the offering. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Father, for blessing every single person in this place tonight according to your word and according to your promise that you will cause there to be a return of blessings. Sparingly for the sparing sower. And generously for the generous, generous sower. But Father, we thank you for the multiplication. We thank you that you multiply us. But Father, we thank you also, and more importantly, for the privilege of just being able to worship you like this. Just the privilege of being able to honor you. Thank you, Father God, that the things that have got people stuck and trapped in the prison of their mind, in the prison of their experience, in the prison of their emotions, in the prison of their complaint, that right now the power of your anointing is here to break every person free, whoever is willing to respond to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come worship the Lord. Come worship the Lord. Come worship him. Come worship him. Come worship the Lord. Come worship him. Come bless his holy name. Come offer an offering in righteousness and faith. Come worship him. If you don't have any money, if you see somebody who didn't come, I want you to go give them some finances. Look, somebody didn't come, go give them some money so they can come. Loan them some money. Somebody didn't come. You see anybody didn't come. Loan them some money. Let them come. Let them come worship. I want everybody to worship. I want everybody participating. I want no one left out. Be sure and obey me tonight. Don't disobey me tonight. This would not be a night to disobey. This would not be a good night to disobey. Just obey God. Participate with God in everything that God is saying to do. You definitely want to do that. Always be prompt, quick to obey. Hallelujah. But I, want to leave, I don't want to leave anyone out tonight. Because I know that there is a blessing in the house. I know that there is liberation for those who've been imprisoned. People, you cannot be a faithful laborer in the kingdom of God and not learn how to just participate in all the things that God has said. You understand, when I read Hebrews chapter 6, 12, it was in the context of you faithfully ministering to the saints in the house of God. Now, you can't listen to a sermon like that and to just go about doing whatever it is you already planned out doing anyways because then you can't say you're doing the will of God. You're doing your will and it's verifiable. 
You're living your own life for your own self. Now, we spoke, we spoke the word of life to you tonight to liberate you, to free you. You know, there's many times where, when it comes to the offering, I just, I don't want to hardly say anything about it. And everybody knows that in here. And I'll just make it, I'll make it to where it's just real clearly be secret between you and God. Because a lot of times that's what the Lord just wants me to do. But there's other times like tonight. You better be ready to obey God when God says speaks. Huh? Because if you practice disobeying God, not being ready, you're going to miss out. It's just all there is to it. I guarantee you, I promise you, you can put this in writing. You can put it on your calendar. You will miss out. Huh? You don't want to miss out on anything. You don't be ready to be obedient. Huh? You don't want to be a prisoner of, prisoner of problems and tribulation and situation in your life. Because that's going to just... You know what's going to happen to you? The earth will swallow you up. The earth will swallow you up. Swallowed up of earthly things. Just get your heart in heaven tonight. Get your affections in heaven. Keep them there. Anyone here right now with sickness or disease or pain or hurt or sorrow in your, in your life? Pain, sickness, disease in your body, hurt, sorrow in your heart. Anyone like that, I want you to come because I'm going to pray for you and the Lord's going to touch you. Whether it's sickness and disease in your body, sorrow and pain in your heart, sin and separation in your spirit. I want you to come. God, come. God will come and touch you. The Lord will touch you. I want you to come. The Lord wants to minister to things. Be here to minister to the things of the Spirit to you tonight. Hallelujah. And everything changes. <clears throat> so you can be confident that whatever the problem is, whatever the issue, whatever the need is, it's going to be cured right here. It's going to be dealt with here tonight. Hallelujah. And, I, and yet there is truly in some in the things of spiritual maturity, God's going to bring you through the trying of your faith to a place where you will be lacking nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. But as far as getting rid of pain and sickness and disease and sorrow in your life, And some people have to just understand, there are certain things, my goodness, <clears throat> that you're just going to have to do differently. You need to eat healthy. If, if you know, some, it's like the person that had a, had a gallstone problem and they loved greasy pork chops of all things. I don't know how anybody can eat a pork chop in the first place, but um, that's another issue. I mean, just, uh, the, the taste of it to me is foul. But nonetheless, you have to do something to that stuff to make it taste edible. But they got to have the greasy pork chop. Well, they're going to just have gallbladder problems because that's going to affect the gallbladder. So there's got to be changes. So the Lord heals them. And they're going to say, well, I'm going to go back and I'm going go, to go back to the problem. Don't go back to the problem. Now I feel a spiritual yoke here. Right now, I feel a spiritual yoke. I can feel a spiritual yoke that I want to break. And you've got to give me permission to break it, to bust it, to liberate you. Hallelujah. I'm going to go after it now in Jesus' name. You just receive. Huh? You don't have to bleed to receive this. You just got to accept. You got to, you don't have to bleed to receive it, you just got to believe to receive it. Thank you, Lord. So, what's up? No more headaches in Jesus' name. You have a headache now? How long have you been having headaches? For about a week. Did you have them before? A week? Is this the first time it's come? Some kind of virus, flu, something? Well, yeah, my body's been 
Well, now in Jesus' name, I command your body to be healed up with the goodness of God. And I command this pain go off your body. Sickness leaves in Jesus' name. Headache goes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. What, what's up? So the pain's going right now? It's it's been going throughout the service. It was really bad for the first three days and then Is there any pain there now? It's gone. It's it's definitely like alleviated because it was like so tight I would like to tear up okay, for the first move three your days. Neck back. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus, for completely healing me. Okay, I'm taking all the pain. I command the pain to go out of your body. Whatever was hurt mm -hmm. is healed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I thank you for this anointing upon your daughter so that she can lay hands on the sick. Wherever you take her, she can move in the faith for the gifts of healing wherever she goes, preaching the gospel, knowing that you, the healer, Lord Jesus. Now in Jesus' mighty name, be filled up with these good things from heaven, daughter of the Lord. Flow and function in these good things that is supplied by the Holy Ghost. They're yours. They belong to you. Now, in Jesus' name, let's receive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All the pain goes out of your neck. What's happening? What's up? Infection goes out of your lungs right now. Out to these lungs. Out, foul thing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. What's wrong with you? What's hurting? Huh? <laughs> What's wrong with you guys? He says, especially when he's like coughing. And he's just Look at me up here. Oh. You been coughing, buddy? Yeah, his nose. Been is sick? Bad. Your nose been runny? In Jesus' name, I command this old sickness get off of you now. In Jesus' name, faith comes to you. Faith overwhelms your soul and overwhelms your being right now in Jesus' name. Father, I ask you right now, touch your servant Caleb. Touch him now. Touch him now. Touch him in the realms of of his spirit where he can walk in humility and brokenness in servitude in meekness let him see the power in it let him see the glory in it now in the name of Jesus Lord take all the fight out of him in the natural and put it all in the spiritual in Jesus name hallelujah Hallelujah. Zeringa Naseya. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for this anointing right now, Caleb. Yeah. 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 Father, I thank you for making him mighty in the spirit. Mighty. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Yeah, that's the glory, buddy. That's it. That's exactly what that is right there. That's an overwhelming presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
That's exactly why you gotta be in church all the time. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Fire! Fire! Fire of your presence. Your boob from the deep is set. Minkat from Mosipe. Out of this body now in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for the anointing on Brad. I ask you, Lord, now, strengthen him in faith and confidence and boldness, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Repastai. Repastai. Irustukuginaka. Jesus' name. Is old nine is that you know I ain't anybody. What's up? What's you guys' problem? <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the anointing right here, right now. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Right now in Jesus' mighty name. Be strengthened by the Spirit. Bill Johnson, be strengthened by the Spirit. <laughs> be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being. Strengthen. Now in Jesus' name. Strengthen. Fortified by the power of the living God. Let the Lord be a shield about you. Hallelujah. Mango Sipe. Father God, you said that if any man lacks wisdom, that all they have to do is ask you and you give it. Father, we thank you that your servant Joseph will start asking for wisdom <laughs> so he can have it in how to administer things with his children. I've been very burdened with, for your children. Believe me. And I've been very burdened. We want you to, be, we want you to grab hold of this thing with us, okay? So there's a big need. I know you're here for something. You want to present something, but I want to present something to you. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is an assignment against Lily, Giuseppe, Abraham, and Hezekiah, and you need to wake up to it. Amen. And you need to take a hold of the realms of faith mm -hmm. so that all of these things can be averted. And the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you for strengthening your servant Joseph thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. so that he will understand how to move in wisdom and prudence mm -hmm. and understanding here mm -hmm. so that no thing that the enemy has purposed to do would ultimately be fulfilled. I bind those things now in Jesus' name. Every weapon formed against you, I bind those things right now. Every weapon formed against your children, I bind it. Every curse I send back to the one who pronounced it in Jesus' name. Now, what do you want me to pray for? What's up? My hand. When I work, it brings swells up and got my hand. I'm really thankful. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for a miracle for this hand now in Jesus' name. Thank you for this miracle. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just receive right now. Receive. You lay hold of the anointing. Let the anointing come into you. You lay hold of the anointing. You lay hold of the anointing. And the miracle takes place. Now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, let there not be just moments of great movings of your spirit in Joseph's life, but may he live in this realm continually. Father, I pray, awaken, make alive, oh God, these passions 
on a continual basis. This manifest glory of your presence. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive right now. <laughs> Receive. 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 Just lift your hands towards heaven. Just receive. The Father take you deeper, man. He loves you so much, Joseph. He loves you so much. You've been so faithful to him. So many ways. Don't hold anything back from him. From this day forward, you begin to deal with everybody, sharing everybody in the love of Jesus Christ with a sweet and a loving and a gentle nature, a forgiving and a merciful disposition. Now you be a faithful representation of Jesus Christ now. Change comes. Change comes. Change comes. You know, when a person's often rebuked and, they're, and they, they don't have a right heart, their heart's only going to harden. And it's not doing anybody any good. You see, the Lord came and reached us and redeemed us and changed the situation by love. By his mercy, by laying down his life, being servant, right? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus' name. Jesus, touch Diane, touch your mom. Jenny, just lift your hands towards heaven. Just let the, let's just let the Lord Jesus touch you. Just let him be your Lord and Savior. Just let him fill you with every good thing. Just commit to him tonight that you're going to obey him and count it all joy when things aren't working according to your plans. Huh? Let God work things out according to his plans. How about that? Baby, come lay your hand. Jenny, be blessed right now. Just be blessed. Let the Lord bless you. He loves you so much. You're his daughter. You're his daughter. You think you forgot? Huh? Uh, he didn't forget nothing. He loves you. He take good care of you. Take good care of you. He ain't gonna beg him. He's begging you. <laughs> Just let him touch you. Right now, I break the stronghold of every oppressing, lying thing, harassing you, tormenting you, and lying against the truth. And now, in Jesus' name. And now, in Jesus' name. Glory, come. Come here. What's up? How are you doing? Doing good? You doing better? You eating more? Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for a quick recovery of every part of Glory's body. I thank you, Father, that you take a hold of her spirit and you rapture her in a realm of heaven. And you use her, Father God, in such a way to manifest your goodness 
your word, your glory. In Jesus' name. I bless you in Jesus' name. I pronounce every good thing upon you. I pronounce every good inheritance that there is in Christ Jesus upon you to be fulfilled in your life by the power and the working of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father, for strengthening this body and strengthening this spirit. Such great peace now. I give you great peace now. Now, what was that? Jeez. Jeez. You old pain, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Go out of this body. Go out of this body. Leave the daughter of the Lord alone in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> Things are feeling really good around here now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love to feel good. I mean, why feel any other way when you can feel good? You know? I mean, feeling bad is my number one enemy. I'm not hanging out with it, not allowing it around. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Imbrus tarbe, ning lak tul magena, suprata in makek nung stai. Estetanani. Thank you, Father, for the gifts of the Spirit. David, how are you doing? I'm good. Okay. Um, I've had a skin condition for the past six years of my life, and I'm sick of it. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, faith fills your spirit. Joy fills your spirit. The Lord says he wants you to give yourself to being happy in him and rejoicing in him, delighting in him. That's what he said. And you said you're willing to do that. You're going to do that. And now in the name of Jesus Christ, I curse this old skin disease, this foul thing that would try to afflict and torment the body of David Graham. Get off his body now in Jesus' name. Go from him. Now you be healed. Healed! I command you to be healed. In Jesus' name, I command you to be happy too. I command you to be joyful. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you look like a disciple of the Holy Ghost or a disciple of Jesus instead of a disciple of the Stoics? I feel the presence of Jesus. I noticed that Stoicism was not a fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for the glory here. Thank you for your manifest presence. Thank you, Father, that none of us will ever take for granted this realm of divine power, this realm of divine grace. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every person will hunger and thirst after these things pertaining to your manifest presence and pertaining to that which you freely give that you want us to be doing with our life, that we'll hunger and thirst for these things more and more. We'll place a demand on this wonderful realm and not live a moment without all the grace that you've given. Oh, Sakara Masatili Bita Tadlo Mombarde. Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Lord, may we have such an honor and such place such a value on your presence that any time no matter whether we're in a classroom what kind of setting we're in whether we're in church service doesn't matter 
that will just stay with your manifest presence. Will just stay there in that place that you've called us to, that you're willing to pour out your glory upon us and not leave the things pertaining to your realms of heaven be more valuable and more important to us than anything else. Father, I thank you for that wonderful glory that was with us on Friday night. Father, I thank you for that wonderful manifest presence, Lord. We can't live without that. That's so beautiful and so wonderful to us, oh God. Lord, I don't want to cut it short just, cause two, just because an hour and a half had gone by. And we were going to try to do it in an hour. Lord, I just want to stay right with you. Whatever you're doing, what, do it your way, oh God. No matter what it takes. Lord, just so long as we have your presence, that's all we want. Just so long as we have your glory, Father, we'll do whatever you want us to do. So long as you're there present with us, oh God. We'll go anywhere, do anything, say anything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Michaela, come here. Father, I want you to touch Michaela. I want you to strengthen her by your spirit right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Castle, come on, God, baby. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are so good. Robert, come over here and lift your hands towards heaven, man. Come here. <laughs> Fire in the name. Fire in that belly. Fire in that life. The glory of heaven fills that soul in Jesus' name. Purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ to spend his life in heaven. Now and forever. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We love every one of you. We love you dearly. We want you to know the Father loves you and there's no reason for you to do anything other than live in His presence and have anything less than every good and perfect thing, His very best. So just begin to thank Him for it. Don't be of a doubtful heart. Don't be double-minded. Begin to thank Him for it. Begin to praise him that he's purposed that you should be perfect, lacking nothing. That's what he's purposed. That's what all the stuff we're going through is <laughs> so that his purposes and his will can be done. Amen. Amen. Find a bunch of people, hug them, tell them that you love them, kiss them. If you're still down on the floor, don't worry about it. Do not hug someone that's out on the floor. Leave them alone. If they get up, then you can hug them. If they don't, 